the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Clap your hands together and celebrate Jesus. Yeah. Clap like you know you, whom you are clapping for. It's not the governor of a state. It's not the president of a nation. It is not the prime minister of a country. You're clapping for the king of kings, the lord of lords, the one who has begotten you, the one who's given you his life, the one who calls you his own, the one who knows you by name, the one who's not too big to listen to you, There's the one who comes down to your level and takes you up to his level. Celebrate him, clap until heaven hears your hand. You can shout, you can sing, you can even dance. Hallelujah. We are in the presence of our Father. Amen. Please, you may be seated. Sit as kings and priests in God's presence. Good morning, champions. Good morning, champions. We are still in the assembly of the God begotten. And we are still looking at our series on begotten of love. Turn to your neighbor. I think, um, I don't know whether I'm the one that is cold or we are the ones that are cold. So say neighbor. You remember that our accent? Neighbor. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Say neighbor. Christ lives in me. I see through his eyes. And think through his mind. Turn to the other person. Say neighbor. Christ lives in me. I see through his eyes. And I think through his mind. Hallelujah. John chapter 15 verse 12. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 5. We will be here till God knows when. This is my commandment, Jesus speaking. That you love one another as I have loved you. And 1 Corinthians 13 has been giving us the definition of love. Verse 5 says, love, which King James calls charity, does not behave itself unseemly. It seeketh not, it, seeketh not her own and is not easily provoked. Where we are going to is the last line, love thinketh no evil. How do we think evil? We think evil by meditating on the harm done to us or the injury we would like to inflict as a form of payback. You know, this picture cracked me up. See the lady, she's just imagining them walking off the cliff for all the things they have done to her. So we think evil by meditating on the harm, the injury, the hurt inflicted on us on, and how we are going to get back. Let's say someone hurts you, someone injured you, someone harmed you, one way or the other, intentionally or unintentionally. And then you sit back and think about how do I get back at this person so he'll really feel it. The word translated think it here means to sit down and conjure something, to put something together using your mind, to occupy yourself with reckonings, with calculations. So we think evil by focusing on people's areas of lack. Calculating their weaknesses, inadequacies, or incapabilities as it opposed to their strengths and abilities. So I see, I see her, and then all I can remember, all I can think about, it's not that she sings very well, it's not that she dresses very well, it's not that she does whatever it is she does well. All my mind focuses on is the things she's inadequate in, the things she lacks, the things she cannot do the things she's unable to stand up to. So we think evil when we allow ourselves to get into a paranoid way of life. You know, you begin to suspect everybody of evil intentions. So let's say you wake up in the morning and you greet your neighbor happily. And he just stares at you with a distant look in his eyes and says nothing. I just want you to imagine it. You wake up in the morning, you see your neighbor, you're like, good morning neighbor. And he just stares at you. He's looking at you. He's saying nothing. 
there's this distant look in his eyes. And after some few seconds of, you know, um, you feeling, on, uh, feeling not okay, you walk away. And then you get to work. The whole of that day is literally occupied with what did you possibly do to this neighbor that he would humiliate you that way. So from that level of, from that thinking, your imagination will literally go wild. You, you begin to think, did you even see how he looked at me like I did not exist? What did I do to him? With those lines of thought, one thing will lead to another. Anger will become bitterness. Bitterness will turn to hatred. Hatred to resentment. Just keep naming it. And then you are already at war with the neighbor and he doesn't know it. A couple of days later, your doorbell rings. And you look through the peephole. Guess who is at the door? The annoying neighbor. And of course, you brace up to give it back to him in case he has brought his insults to your house. And the moment you open the door, he apologizes to you, explaining that the day before, when you greeted him, he could not answer because just before you came out, he got a message that his mother had just passed. And he went into shock because his mother was not sick and his mother is still young. So when you greeted him, he could hear you, he could see you, but he felt too numb to answer his voice he just couldn't find his voice that's why he kept looking at you now i wanted us to imagine ourselves in that situation we had misjudged misinterpreted we had become angry even planned how we are going to how we are going to greet him back next time the day he greets us and then we wake up to discover that at that moment that was a man in need and we were wrong love thinketh no evil we think evil when we live in par paranoia. We think evil when we suspect everyone of evil intention. Why is she smiling that way? Why did she greet me that way? Is that good morning not too loud? Why did she change my cup from this position? Why did my clothes not come back the way it should? What is wrong with that tailor? What is wrong with that teacher? Did you notice how they spoke to me at the teacher's conference? And the many, I'm sure that we have different stories uh, each and every one of us, I, may not, I can never be able to bring up stories and scenarios in which we, even as we are seated here, would remember when we misjudged people, when we misinterpreted their action, or when we misunderstood what was said. And our misjudgment, our misinterpretation, our misunderstanding did nothing to stop us from being angry, bitter, resentful, or disappointed. It didn't even stopped us from feeling insulted, hurt, or belittled. And despite all of this, Despite the fact that we felt all of this, if you sit back and look at it, all of that just happened in your mind. You are the one that imagined it. We are the ones that imagine it. We are the ones that assume that Mrs. Akamba is wearing green because she wants to stand out. And you are just, she could have worn green today because that was the perfect color. Green could have just been what she wanted to wear, but you could sit down and read meaning into it. Paul is calling us today our text today is calling us to guard the affections of our heart, to pay attention to our innermost well-being, to refuse doggedly to think evil, to refuse to suspect people. Life rises and falls on the quality of our heart. Proverbs 4.23 says, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. If you, if you pay, if, if without, the, without us guiding our heart, guarding our heart, our thoughts will take us on distances, on, on courses we did not plan. Because your thoughts affect all that you are. The passion, my Passion Bible puts it this way, that out of your heart flows the seasons of your life. So it is our hearts, not our ages, not our circumstances that shape the seasons of our lives. If our hearts are filled with the love of God, if our hearts are filled with love as God knows love, we will see people and see their actions through lenses that are tainted by love and enjoy perpetual harmony in our relationships. And if you look back, even as I'm talking, you will discover that you don't judge the people you love. If you love me, even when I make mistakes, you make excuses for me. But if you are not really into me, and you're not really fond of me, 
you will, you will misunderstand even my footsteps on your, you just, you hear my footsteps and you wonder where is she going to. So when we love people, we make excuses for their failures. We make allowances to accommodate their humanity. We trust their hearts. We trust them because we love them. But when you're, you're not in love, when you do not love appropriately, as Paul would put it, you suspect everything that person does. Love, the love of God in us, allows us to give people a benefit of the doubt. When they act or behave in ways that disappoint us, the love of God in us does not think evil. It does not live in paranoia. It does not suspect people. In fact, when we love people as God does, we begin to see them and see their actions and hear their words through his perspective. Last week, God called us back to the place of perfect forgiveness where we forgive people who haven't even asked for forgiveness, where we are to forgive people who have not recognized that they have hurt us, where we are to forgive people who have not even acknowledged or re repented of the sin, and yet God says, don't worry about them, you do the forgiving. Today he's calling us to walk away from paranoia, walk away from the life of suspicion and mistrust. When you think of people this week, don't think about their weaknesses. Try to look for the strengths. Even if all you find is a smile, Hold on to that, celebrate that, talk about that, and just focus on that. This is the only way we, will, we would be able to see beauty in, other, beauty in other people. We have to allow the love of God in us to let us, allow the love of God in us to believe the best about people. We have to allow ourselves to the love of God that it will help us to believe the best about people, see the best in their actions, interpret the best in their words, and perceive the best in their silence. Love does not think evil. As we rise this morning to make our confession, I want us to pay attention to Paul. Paul is the one God used to write this. He said, love thinketh no evil. Why? Because love is busy thinking about the things that are true, things that are authentic, things that are real. Love is busy thinking about things that are noble, things that are reputable, things that are dignified, things that are honorable. Love is busy thinking about things that are just, things that are right and beautiful. Love is, does not think evil because it's busy thinking about things that are pure and of good report, things that are merciful and kind. Thinking evil is giving the devil a foothold. Thinking evil is inviting the devil and giving him a golden opportunity to manipulate you. And today God is calling us through his apostle that if there is any virtue in anything, if there is any excellence, if there is anything praiseworthy, fix your thoughts on those things. Meditate on those things. Calculate those ones. Reckon those ones. Take account of those things. Rise as we take our confession. This week I have a task for us. For everyone you work with, whether at home or in the office, I want you to intentionally look out, search out what is good about that person. Celebrate that thing. Embrace that thing. And when you think about that person, remember that one thing that is good about that person. And just focus on that. For that is how we will begin to heal our heart and train our eyes to see beauty in other people. Say this with me. I am begotten of love to manifest love. Say it like you mean it. I cannot be squeezed into the mold of this present age. I have the spirit of love, power, and self-discipline. From today, I stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around me. My way of thinking is transformed by the Holy Spirit. I am empowered to discern the will of God in every situation. I am begotten of God to think differently. I am dead to bitterness, envy, hostility, and paranoia. I refuse to copy the behavior and customs of this world. I take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. I allow the Holy Spirit 
to show me how to think in a new way. And I take delight in obeying the Lord. I am made anew in the attitude of my mind. I refuse to judge by appearance. Nor make a decision based on hearsay. I guard the affections of my heart. For they affect all that I am. My mouth is God's portal of kindness. It shall not bring forth wickedness. I set my mind on things above and not on earthly things. I intentionally bring my life under the dominion of love. And I permit God to transform my life by changing the way I think. I declare that I am not fashioned after and adapted to this world. I choose to keep my thoughts continually fixed on all that is true. I fix my mind on things that are honorable and admirable. I think on things that are beautiful and respectful. I meditate on whatever is pure and holy, merciful and kind. I think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Today and always, I am made new in my heart and in my thinking through Christ Jesus. I want us to just raise our voices and ask the Holy Spirit to give us the grace to sink the way God wants us to think, to think as sons and daughters begotten of God, men and women begotten of love. Say, Holy Spirit, show me the different ways that I am thinking evil. Help me to know how this thinking evil is playing out in my life. Help me to know how this thinking evil is playing out in my life. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you the different ways put suspicion on people's words and actions because if it does not open our eyes we will not see it ask God to transform your life by changing the way you think tell him Lord awaken love in me awaken love in me awaken your love in me because if it doesn't transform the way we think we will speak evil and become defiled by it the Lord help me to see like you do help me to think like you do. Help me to love like you do. Help me to live as your son. Say, Lord, awaken love in me. Begin to celebrate God for his grace to love. Thank, thank him for the grace to be a partaker of his divine nature of love. Say, thank you, Father, for making me a partaker of your divine nature of love. Thank you for making me partaker of your divine nature, for making us partakers of your nature of love.